The Fortus. This video covers the Fortus from the number six opposing solo perspective. The Fortis is a challenging aerobatic slow speed maneuver featuring both solo pilots line abreast in full carrier landing configuration, but with a twist. Number five, the lead solo flies the maneuver inverted. It might look like number five is doing all the work for this one, and he certainly has his hands full, but it is actually on number six to make the maneuver look good. All right. Let's brief this thing. Briefing. The maneuver begins once number six rejoins in parade formation on number five's right wing. From there, the two aircraft will turn onto the show line and dirty up, meaning they will drop their landing gear and a resting hook. The Fortis is the first airborne section maneuver and therefore requires both pilots to make the mental shift to flying in formation as a section, focusing on smoothness, precision, and accuracy, representing not just the capabilities of the FA-18C Hornet, but also the dedication and excellence present in every naval aviator. At two nautical miles from center point, number five will roll inverted and number six will move up his left side to line abreast formation, slightly below number five, so that the two jets appear to be mirror images of each other as they cross center point. After they cross center point, number five will roll 180 degrees right side up and both aircraft will perform a gentle clearing turn behind crowd left while retracting their gear and hook. Once gear and hook are up on both aircraft, they will clear 90 degrees on separate headings for the MRT. This maneuver requires a good understanding of formation flying and requires trust in number five to fly a steady profile. You'll be head out of the cockpit the whole way, so double check your switches and let's get after it. Walk through. All right, so here we are back in the cockpit of our trusty FA-18C Hornet, and we're going to be walking through in detail the Fortis from the number six perspective, and you'll notice that we are upside down. Why are we upside down? Well, as I talked about in the walkthrough for the previous maneuver, the inverted to inverted roll, in a lot of ways for the number six opposing solo pilot, those two maneuvers, the inverted to inverted and the Fortis, are all kind of one maneuver. They are all kind of run together because things come very thick and very fast once we start the inverted pass. So I wanted to start this walkthrough right at the tail end of the inverted to inverted in order to explain that we're already thinking ahead about the Fortis as we're ending the inverted to inverted rolls. So here we are, we're inverted, we're flying the show heading, roughly speaking, and then we're about to roll 270 degrees and pull hard to establish a behind crowd heading for the clear for the maneuver. As we do that, we're already thinking through, all right, what's happening next? Well, we're gonna roll hard and pull behind crowd because we wanna establish visual contact with number five as quickly as we can so that we can begin setting up a good intercept and rejoin with him. Simultaneous to that, we have to make sure that our jet is configured properly for the next maneuver. And that means making sure that our arresting hook, which is down here, is down because the Fortis, if you'll remember, is a maneuver that is flown in the dirty configuration, which means gear down and hook down. We'll save the gear for when we're in formation with number five, and he'll call that, but the hook needs to come down first. Now, number five should call that the hook will come down once we're in that clearing direction, um, but we need to be thinking ahead about that because we don't want to be behind the show, and there's a lot of things we've got to manage in this clear and in this rejoin, and so we want to get ahead of that. So, 
let's unpause and watch this roll out. And I'm actually going to slow things down just a little bit because of how quickly all this stuff comes together. So here we are, called clear, and then standby roll, and we roll and pull hard behind crowd. We're looking for the behind crowd heading of 334. And there it is. Little push to neutralize the turn, then roll back to level. And then we're going to pull to 10 degrees for that deconfliction heading, and then we're already rolling and turning behind crowd, and we're trying to find, there we go. And there he is. We have found number five, and he is clearing as well. And he's beginning his clearing turn to establish a crowd right heading for the setup for the next maneuver, which means he's turning into us. So as soon as we see him, as soon as we establish visual contact, we will call contact to let him know we see him and we can proceed. He doesn't need to do anything fancy to make himself more visible. He can just continue with his maneuver as he is used to doing it. All right, so... Now we need to be thinking about how we're going to set up that intercept. But before we do, I want to mention something that's very important. When we're turning in here, as soon as we roll to the right and start to pull behind crowd to start to look for number five above our head out of the canopy, we want to be in full burner and we want to have that hook coming down. So almost as soon as we pull up to that 10 degree nose high heading, I'm popping that hook and you want to have that key bound you don't want to have to do that in the clicky cockpit that's way too complicated for what's going on and then you want to be in full burner because you want plenty of speed in order to set up that intercept if you're slow you're never going to get rejoined quickly so you want to have a lot of excess air speed that you can play with in order to make sure that rejoin happens well then once you're rolled then you're going to be looking over your head trying to find number five you find him you call contact and then you're thinking about all right we got to think about intercept geometry at this point so let's talk a little bit about that. If we are trying to intercept with number five, and he is coming this direction, he's coming, turning into us and crossing us. If we keep flying back this direction toward the crowd left heading, we just come to a number that we've set in our brains, we are going to end up being real slow and we're gonna be behind number five and we're gonna be chasing him all the way back around and it's going to take a long time for us to rejoin so we want to set up an intercept course instead which means we want to come to a heading in front of number five that he is going to cross so basically we're setting up a conflicting flight path so that means we're going to roll out a little bit ahead of where he is and let him cross our nose and then we'll turn hard into him in order to establish ourselves on his right wing in welded wing or parade formation so let's check that out i'll unpause here Watch at number five. There we're gonna roll out here, so he's crossing our nose. And then we're also, he will be giving us, oh, let me pause it real quick. He will be giving us a speed call as he's rolling out. He will be giving us his air speeds every 10 knots so that we know how fast he's going. Because that's really helpful for us to understand how to get a good intercept and how to get a good rejoin. He'll probably be calling a speed between 350 knots and 400 knots. That's because he will have been flying the previous maneuver, the inverted, at 400 knots and will have lost some airspeed around the corner, but we'll know that he has to keep power in in order to not lose too much. The airspeed he should be looking for is 350 knots, but we don't care about that. We only care what he tells us. So if he comes around the corner and he says 410 knots, that's what we're paying attention to. We can't hold him to that airspeed and expect that it'll work out. We need to fly whatever he's flying. So I think in this pass, he was calling about 375, 370, I don't quite remember. But you can see over here in our airspeed indicator, we're going four, almost 440 knots. So we got some speed to bleed off. Fortunately, we also have a pretty sharp turn that we're going to have to do to get back on his heading. So we have lots of extra angles to bleed that speed with. So I actually like having some additional speed, but that means we got to get on this turn. Because if we don't turn in pretty soon, we're going to have too much speed and we're going to end up strung out way behind him and we won't make that rejoin quick. So right about the time that he would cross our nose, I'm already going to want to be turning in. Left roll, pull hard, and then I'm going to want to establish him at a particular spot on my canopy, generally speaking, which is going to be down here. I'm going to want him to be somewhere in there, and I'm going to want to hold him there, and I'm not going to want to be in lag pursuit, because that means I'll be too far behind him, but anywhere between pure pursuit and um, a little bit ahead of pure pursuit is probably what we're going to want to look for. So let's see how we do. 
So we should be turning to the left here pretty soon. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah, there we are. So we're a little behind him. We're going to pull him into our HUD, and we're going to pull past him, and then I'm going to be looking for him. So we missed it a little bit. We're a little behind. You can see what happens. We're way out here, and we're a little far back. If you do it right, and I'm going to pause, he will stay down in this quadrant down here, and then you'll kind of string him out over here when you roll out. This is not too bad, what we've got here. He's a little farther than I'd like. It's going to take a little more time to rejoin than I would prefer, but it's not awful. But in a perfect world, you want him just right up in this quadrant, because that'll make that rejoin nice and tight. Okay, let's keep watching the track. All right, so we got him up here, and now we're just flying him, and we're trying to set up a good rejoin. So what's a good rejoin? Let's pause again and talk about that. You'll notice that we are not approaching Chariot right from behind. We are also not approaching him perpendicularly from the side, where we'd have to do some ridiculous turn in order to get lined up with him and right on his wing. We're approaching at this kind of 45 degree angle. And the reason why we do that is because it's much easier to get a sense of what our closure rate is from this angle where we have more information about his jet that our eyes are receiving in order to get a sense of how quickly we're closing on him. So we're going to want to ride this 45 degree angle all the way into his wing. I did not learn this rejoin technique when I started flying this uh, show with Chariot. And uh, my rejoins sucked for a long time, and it would take me forever to get in on his wing. So I highly recommend that you learn about the different types of pursuit, lead, pure, and lag, and that you also study a little bit of intercept geometry, because it will really help you to clean up those rejoins and make them quick and precise. All right, so we're going to ride that 45 degree angle all the way in. I'm going to speed this up again. There we go. And like I said, this took me a little longer than I would prefer, but it's not too bad. And we're just keeping him stable at a particular spot in our canopy. I'll we'll just ride that in because that'll give us closure. So at this point, he's probably told me what his airspeed is, and he's going to want to be slowing down quite a bit for the next maneuver. So he's not going to hold 350 all the way on this rightward heading. He's going to want to drop speed so that eventually when we start turning in for the Fortis, we want to be right around 300 knots. And the reason we want to be right around 300 knots is because we're going to drop the gear. We're going to dirty up. 300 knots is the fastest you can go without overspeeding the gear and causing a gear warning or blowing off a gear door. So we need to get that speed down. And I mention that because we're going 350 knots here. We have 50 knots faster than he is going, which means we got to slow this bird up. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. The best way, obviously, is to use your speed brake, but that might not always get you the brakes you need. If you have to, you can maneuver, so you can pull, you can do an extra turn, but that looks bad. So my best suggestion for slowing yourself down when you have to is what's called crossed controls, and that would be you get your speed brake out, but then the cross controls is you have control surfaces that are basically forcing the plane to do different motions. So you're going to want to have your aileron set up to roll you to the left, for instance, and then you'll have your rudder set up to pull you to the right. And that will neutralize those inputs, so you'll keep basically the same heading, but you'll get a lot of extra control surfaces out in the air to give you extra drag, which will slow you down real fast. And you'll see, as I come in here, I get sucked right up in there, and I'm able to just stop right on his wing. It's even a little spooky. I was a little faster than I'm comfortable with. But you see, I get right in there, and then he begins his turn in. That's another thing to note is that uh, if you are slow on that rejoin, he's going to start maneuvering for his setup, and you just got to be ready to roll with whatever punches he's dealing you. And so I got in just in time for that roll in, which ends up looking pretty cool, but it was not intentional, and I would have preferred to have been saddled up on his wing and more comfortable in my position relative to him before the maneuver begins, because then I don't have to do as much work to make sure that I'm in the right position for formation flying. At this point, once you're roughly in position on Five's right wing, you will give the radio call Five's call sign, you've got two. 
So Chariot, you've got two. And that tells him that he is now flying a two-ship. He has his wingman in position. And that will give him the freedom to maneuver. And also, that is usually about the timing where he will call for you to get in full dirty configuration, which means to drop the gear. And to do that, the radio call will be stand by the gear, gear. And on that second gear, that's when you flip the switch for the gear to come down. All right, so now we're setting up and we're trying to fly good formation on our number five. What does good formation look like? Well, there's a variety of different types of formation flying that we do throughout the show. And there's a particularly very close in tight Blue Angels form flying that the Diamond does pretty much consistently throughout the show. But for our purposes, we're just trying to stay close enough that we are where we need to be for the setup for the next maneuver. But we don't want to be super close because you got to remember the next thing that's going to happen in this turn is that we're going to get into the dirty configuration, which means the Chariot's gear is going to come down and if we're too close we might bump into his gear and cause all sorts of problems and then on top of that we're bleeding off a ton of speed and the jet's getting a little squirrely so I like to stay a little loose this is probably looser than you need to be I could probably get a little tighter than this but um, you don't want to be sucked right in that 18 inch wingtip to wingtip separation that they always talk about for this maneuver because you got gear to think about and then also you're going to be flying real slow and real dirty and you want to have a little bit of room just in case something goes crazy um, the sight picture you're generally looking for here is more or less like this. You're trying to basically match his wing angle, and you're kind of paying attention to this area of his jet. And you want to have his air intake lined up with this Blue Angels decal. You want to see the bottom of his jet. You want to see these things lined up. Um, ideally, you'd be a little further up um, so that you're on his wing. You can kind of look down at the top of his leading edge extension here, but this is still not too bad. And then you just basically want to just keep this sight picture all the way around the turn and try to keep it as stable as possible, which means doing a lot with your left hand and comparatively little with your right hand. A lot of throttle, not a lot of stick. Keep that stick smooth. Um, and that's just something that'll take a lot of practice. But if you do it a lot, air to air refueling, is a breeze and I know a lot of people in DCS complain about that not hard at all after doing this all right so we're just trying to maintain that psych picture and then as soon as he drops gear he's gonna need to bring in a lot of power to maintain airspeed so you should expect a power call and you should anticipate it and be a little ahead of it so you can keep again that psych picture consistent so we're just trying to hold the psych picture hold it hold it and right around now so at this point, at the 90, number five will give his call sign and then gear down, hook down, flaps up, boards up, but very quickly. So in this case, chariot, gear down, hook down, flaps up, boards up. And then number six will reply with the same leb, gear down, hook down, flaps up, boards up, which indicates that we are in the dirty configuration and everything's ready for the maneuver. That's where I start thinking about trying to what's called hide the jet, which means I'm trying to stick my jet in a spot relative to number five's jet so that my jet is hidden behind his jet relative to the crowd. So it looks like just one jet is flying there. And then when we roll out for the actual maneuver, I will come out from behind number five and then it'll look like one jet morphs into two. It's really hard to get this right. But with practice, you can. And when you do get it right, it looks so cool and is very satisfying. But in order to get that, you want to have a good sense for where is the airfield relative to where we are. And then you want to stick number five's jet in between you and the airfield and just keep him in between. And that means that you'll actually have to adjust the position of your jet relative to number five in order to keep him there because he will need to roll out of the turn. And so you will end up dropping back behind him and then eventually slide over to his left when the maneuver actually begins. So it's a very... Um, tricky thing to get right and will mostly just take practice. I don't have a lot of quick and dirty tips for how to do it right. But in general, if you know where the airfield is, you want to stick it right here on this US Navy, the A and the V. That's where you want center point to be, basically relative to where you are. And then you just keep it there. And as the jet rotates and you come closer to heading, you just imagine that there's a spot in the middle of number five's jet, like right in the middle of it. And you're kind of 
trying to keep that middle spot right on center point the entire way around. So we'll see how we do. Coming in, coming in. All right, so now we're turning on to show heading, so I need to drop back behind Chariot. So I'm releasing a little bit of power. I'm pulling behind him, and I want to stay above him if I can for a couple of reasons. One, because if we stay below him underneath his wing, like you typically would when you're flying form down here, that will actually make you look way far lower than he is relative to the crowd. And so you are not hiding the jet like you should be. And the second reason why we want to stay a little bit above him is related to jet wash. Now, I do not recommend flying the profile with jet wash on, and most servers don't include jet wash. Imagine that the jet wash is there and fly as though it were, because that's the right way and the safe way. And so we're going to try and stay high above his nozzles and then drift across his jet and end up on the left of him and almost a beam, but we want to be behind him so that there's space for the roll-in. So there we are above, we've got to pull hard, and all right, and now we're in position over on the right side. So at this point, we have a little bit of breathing room and we can take a peek at what our heading is, how we do in relative to center point, we're basically on it. He's rolled out pretty smoothly and we're more or less in the right spot. And we do want to be a couple of plane lengths behind number five because he's about to roll inverted for the maneuver. And our role right now is actually to be his spotter, his safety officer, because he's about to do a very dangerous maneuver. And so we want to be out of the way of him so we're not conflicting with him. But also we want to be in a position where we can spot if something goes wrong, we can indicate any problems we see, and we can help him perform whatever evasive and corrective maneuvers he needs to do in the event of something really bad happening. So we need to be a couple of plane lengths behind him to make sure that that's okay. But once he rolls inverted, then our work really begins because we want to get positioned in the right spot relative to him to set up the mirror image look that we want at center point. So he should roll in here pretty soon once his wings are set. So here we are, we're waiting for him. And now there come a couple of radio calls to ensure that the maneuver is going to be performed safely. So number five, who's not looking at us, he's just trying to fly his profile, will call chariots rolling in. And we need to call clear when he does so that he knows that he is safe to be in his maneuver. We're not in a spot we shouldn't be. We're not a beam him or in a place where he would run into us. But then once we give that clear, he can immediately initiate that 180 degree roll to roll inverted. There he goes. And once he's inverted here, he's probably going to do a decent amount of correction in order to make sure that he is on the right heading and that he's level and stable. And so he'll be a little unstable for a bit. And you just need to account for that and what you're about to do next because you need to get abreast of him as fast as you can so almost as soon as he starts his roll in i'm bringing in the power almost to military power to get up a beam number five as quickly as i can but i also have to recognize that he could end up in a different spot in the sky than he is once he rolls out based on the corrections he's having to do to get his jet stable and most often that ends up with him losing altitude, but sometimes it means he gains altitude and you just have to be prepared for whatever he's going to do and be watching really closely to be ready to roll with those punches. Fortunately, you don't have to get set up just right until you're a beam. So he lost a little altitude there, bringing the nose down just a little bit to account for it. And now I'm looking for about this sight picture here. So we'll pause. So why are we so far forward? You'll notice he's behind us here. Well, that again is because what the crowd is seeing is going to be us lined up basically right abeam each other because of the angle that they're looking at. If I was actually truly abeam him, it would look like I was behind him relative to the crowd. So I'm trying to put myself in a position relative to him, to number five, so that it looks like we're flying directly line abreast the entire way in. For this particular pass, I didn't get it quite right. I ended up a little bit behind him at center point, and we'll see that in a minute. But in general, as we're heading in for center point, 
this is the site picture we want to start with, where he's behind. You're going to be looking over your right shoulder, and it's going to feel too far, but it's actually about right. And then all the way into center point, and you just kind of have to guess based on how long it's been in the inverted profile for number five. You're going to want to not drop back much further than when your right shoulder is directly a beam his nose because that will look basically like you're a beam relative to crowd. I've noticed if you drop back where you feel like you're right a beam the pilot, you end up looking a little further behind than you actually are. So you don't want to get too much further back than like his his nose. But once you reach center point, number five is going to add a little drive some push in order to gain altitude for his rollout and when he does that that's the first time you're going to want to start dropping behind him because when he rolls out you want to be well clear so that if he rolls out too far he rolls into where you would be you're no longer directly beam him and there will not be any conflict okay so he's going to be giving a little bit of push there's center point there's the push, and we're going to try and drop back behind him, so I'm off the throttle, then he rolls out, and then right about now, he's rolled out, and we're already anticipating the next move. The clear for this is a slight, easy left-hand bank, and then we're going to retract the gear and the hook in that order gear and then hook. Now there are a lot of inputs in order to make sure that the site picture looks good because we want to look like we're continuing line abreast all the way out of the show box relative to the crowd. But when that left bank happens we want to keep the wings directly parallel. And in order to do that we're actually going to have to drop below number five once he sets up his bank. The bank will be about 15 to 20 degrees but I don't worry about the degrees I'm flying completely based on what I'm seeing the attitude of his jet is but that means once that roll starts we're gonna need a little bit of push in order to make sure that we stay in the right attitude relative to him so that it looks like we're completely in line that's actually something that's important to mention as well when number five is rolling out from his inverted flight, he will lose quite a bit of altitude and his nose attitude will tend to point down under the horizon. Because we've been pulling up up to that point, our nose attitude is above the horizon. So once he starts to roll, we're immediately pushing the nose over, watching number five the entire time to try and match that angle of descent but it's going to require quite a bit of push and it's going to feel very uncomfortable but if you don't do it you'll end up very high relative to number five and you will not get the correct sight picture you want but this is the picture we want we want number five basically right in this spot relative to our jet ideally actually he'd be a little bit more down here um, or a little just right in this area though is where we want him and then we're trying to match whatever his role is here so there it is there's the role we're trying to match his wings and then he will call stand by the gear gear and on the word gear we raise the gear and then stand by the hook hook and on the word hook we raise the hook and if you do it right those will be synchronized and it'll look sexy as heck and then we're flying and trying to keep him in the same spot in our canopy. There's gears coming, hooks coming, trying to keep him in the same spot, adding a little bit of power, a little bit of pull, keep him there. And then eventually, right there, he will call your call sign. So for me, Brother Leb, knock it off. And then I will snap to the left 90 degrees and pull to the behind crowd heading 334. And as soon as I'm snapping, I'm calling clear. And then when I say clear, he will snap to the left of show heading, which is 064. So there's the snap, the pull, 334, rolling out. And then we'll establish basically a 5 to 10 degree nose high attitude, full military power, as we egress the show box and get ready for the MRT. The Fortis is a maneuver that is 
extremely difficult to get right, but it's very gratifying. And you will get a lot of practice because it's slow. You have a lot of time in the maneuver because the airspeed is low. With practice, you will improve your formation flying quite a bit. And this maneuver is extremely impressive. And one of the hallmarks, the calling cards of the Blue Angels Air Show, you always see pictures of this, so you want to get it right. It seems like number five is doing most of the work because he's the one who's flying inverted and that's the intense, dangerous type of flying. But the maneuver will not look good unless you make it look good. So your job is to make number five look good in this maneuver. And in order to do that, you need to learn to fly off of him smoothly, cleanly, and correctly. So practice, practice, practice. But I promise you, practice will make perfect. Okay, it's time to put it all together for a full-speed, full-com run-through of the Fortis, taken from one of our recent Cobaletti shows. Pay particular attention to the rejoin, the formation flying on the ingress, and then the spacing during the maneuver itself. Let's take a look. Chariots clear and clear behind the crowd for the Fortis. Coming left, hooks coming down, state 9-4. Leb, state 9-3. 360. 350. 345, 340, you got to 330, chariot, ease in the pull and rolling out, 320, state 94, 4 adding a little power, lives in, chariot, state is 9, 2, Coming left, coming further left, and uh, the paw. Stand by the gear, gear. Adding power, adding more power. Power set. Ease and some pull, ease and some power. Ease and more pull. Adding a little power. Come and left. And rolling out. The Fortis. A little outboard. Up. Chariots rolling in. Clear. Chariots online. Center point. A little pull. Turrets rolling out. Clear. Come and left. Set. Stand by the gear. Gear. Hook. Puddle lab. Knock it off. Clear. Trace clear. And Terry is clearing behind the crowd for the MRT State 90. MRT State 18. And that's how the Legacy Blue Solos performed the Fortis. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel, where you can find full side by side show sequences and debriefs. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the flight line.